And here we are, the Evening Whispers, Monday, September 28th, 2020. Military personnel stationed along East Coast to prevent immigrants flooding from the Atlantic. Werewolf representatives push the ministry for more accessible sedative. Doctor from Salak Town arrested for experimenting with child cloning. These topics sound very familiar to real life. So let's start the day with the evening whispers. This one might be a little bit rude to not talk to her. Oh, it's an article that she wrote, Freya Fatima. Ah, all the articles here from the Daily Whispers are hers. Only read this one. This might take a little while, but it might be interesting. Are these short stories she's writing that get published. The Anxious Boy and His Love Stories on Public Transport by Freya Fatima, September 28, 2020. The day was hot, sunny and humid, just like most days in Jakarta. I was standing inside a crowded bus, neither well-functioning air conditioning uh, I was standing inside a crowded bus, neither well-functioning air conditioning nor proper ventilation. Trying to keep myself productive in the uncomfortable environment by reading my recently bought copy of Maruki Harkami's The Elephant Vanishes while listening to a random playlist on my old iPod. Despite the hellish conditions, you could say I was luckier than most because I was standing near the rear door of the bus, leaning my back on the side of a seat, safe enough not to fall out of the bus breezy enough to breathe freely. It's very sensitive, hard to scroll here without scrolling too far. As mentioned, I was on a public bus in Jakarta, so naturally I needed to be wary of my surroundings, mostly keeping my belongings secure from pickpockets and other human pests. I glanced around the bus several times in between pages. And that was when I saw her. It's hard to describe her. She has no specific characteristic to differentiate her from other women. She was like the perfect example of the girl you walked past unseen on the sidewalk every day. A girl you might glance at for a second. Then a few steps later it would be hard even to remember her hair color. Never mind what her eyes, her nose, her mouth looked like. She was standing near the front door of the bus, not leaning on anything or anyone, not touching the bacteria infested hand grip on the ceiling of the bus. Although to be fair, it might have been hard for her to reach that grip anyway. But still, she stood there with the perfect balance of a tree, rooted in healthy soil. She stood as if somebody had silently put the Venus del de Milo on the bus, and she somehow fit perfectly without anyone noticing it happening. She was wearing a pair of earphones, wired, just like headphones were supposed to be, and a slight smile on her face. Sometimes she closed her eyes for a few moments, enjoying the music only she could hear. Her eyes rarely stayed in one place. They kept wandering around the bus. Not too fast like someone eye anxious, not too slow like someone looking at something specific. Maybe she's the one I thought. This isn't the first time a thought like this has crossed my mind. As a hopeless romantic, seeing any woman who packs my, my interest will immediately trigger a story in my imagination. A story of how I'll approach them, get to know them, with a proviso that they're just as Im I imagined them to be. Start dating, get married, have kids, grow old in our home, and so on, and so on. Random cuties, that's what I call them. Unicorns among horses. The term doesn't apply to any cute girls I see, of course. It has to be someone special, or at least someone I imagine to be special. Thing is, automatically imagining those stories whenever I happen across a random cutie isn't healthy. It puts a toll on my heart on my mind and of course my heart. 
creates a lot of unhealthy expectations before any opportunities even arise. Oh shit! She looked at me. We made eye contact for a brief flash of seconds. I immediately returned to my book. Did she notice me staring at her? Did she see what I was thinking? My mind won't stop spinning, overthinking, while a pulse beats double time in my ears. I continue staring at my book. But what just happened, I obviously can't read it properly. My eyes were looking at the words, but nothing was being processed other than thoughts of her. I glanced back at her, and she was staring at me. Eye contact more than once. It has to mean something. Should I approach her and introduce myself? Yes, yes, I should. But why, what if things go wrong? What's the worst thing that could happen if we introduce ourselves? First, it's a crowded bus. And moving from the rear door to the front will definitely annoy some people. Second, what if after we approach her, she becomes annoyed and Oh, come on, you're overthinking as usual. Nothing bad will happen, even if she does get annoyed. Don't dismiss me. Nothing bad will happen. Well, she might scream and say I'm a pervert, and then the whole bus will beat me to death. Oh, and the worst option? What if we introduce ourselves? And then it turns out she's not like we imagined her to be. All that time and energy will be wasted, exchanged for years of agony. Oh, for everything will be fine. Don't worry so much. No matter what happens second, we still have to try something first. No, no, there's still too much at risk. The debate is still raging inside my head, and that's when it happens. We make eye contact again. This time, this time, it lasts longer than a few seconds. And then she smiled at me. Just a small curve on those perfectly average beautiful lips. I quickly returned to my book. See, you have to do something. But there's a typo. Remember the girl with the violin we saw on the train to Yogyakarta a few years ago? Of course I remember. Exactly. She was just a random person that sat across from you on the train. We don't even remember what month it was. And yet, we still remember the maroon coat she was wearing violin case she put in the overhead com compartment, her reddish hair and that pixie cut, her stop it. That was different and we might have saved ourselves a lot of embarrassment by not talking to her. The thoughts, the noise, the internal dialogue, it won't stop. I was sweating, but not because of the heat, the cold sweat. This had to stop. STOP! I screamed internally. Everything stopped. Just in time, my old iPod randomly shuffled to explosions in the spaces. The only moment we were alone. I cranked up the volume, put my book in my back and just breathed. Yes, I might lose the chance to meet the one by doing this. But at least, as long as I don't know her, she's perfect. As far as I know, she might be listening to explosions in the space. As far as I know, she might be a big fan of Harukami and Final Dreams 9. As far as I know, she might be single. As far as I know, she might be the 100% perfect match for me that I believe can't exist if my knowledge of her goes any farther than what I know right now. Besides, as the old saying goes, if it's meant to be, it will be. The bus stopped in front of Plaza C9 my destination. It was time for me to go. I decided not to look in her direction as I left, knowing that if I looked at her, it would be the last time I ever saw her. That's too hard for a hopeless, rom uh, hopeless romantic like me. I left the bus and enjoyed the warm sun and the breeze of fresh air, finally out of that m metal Schrodinger's box. That's when it happened. I turned my head to the right and there she was standing alone, enjoying the breeze. Now she was free of the roasting metal box we humans named Buzz. She turned her head to the left, showing a glimmer of surprise at seeing me standing there. After that, she smiled. So if it's meant to be, it will be. 
interesting to read the stories as they are they are written by a character in the game. We have Cyberpunk Love Hotel. <clears throat> I think these are standalone stories. Swipe right to outer space. Oh, she's obviously inspired by the stuff that happens here. Thank you for subscribing to our fiction plan. Free trial. You'll have active subscription to our fiction plan and we'll start receiving your daily short stories tomorrow. Yeah, but I think if I read them in this Let's Play every episode, the episodes get way too long. I might start a standalone series where I just read out the short stories. And I think I will do just that. So stay tuned and watch. Look out for the rest of my channel. But I might do that in German because I have too much reading content. In a I'm not sure, maybe I'll do it in English, maybe in German. We will see, but I will start a standalone series where I read these stories. Stay tuned and check out the rest of Lemon Cookie TV. So, but now for this day. I should, but very, very interesting stuff that this lady in front of us wrote. Are you sure that would be okay? Yes! I mean, it would really be hard to pull off. But it's something that will make the story different. Different isn't, isn't always good. It's a neat concept. But you need to handle it carefully. And gracefully. I know. So. Hey, Gala. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Gala. Am I interrupting? It looked like you were having an intense discussion. It's nothing. Lemon Cookie was just giving me feedback. It's for the book that I'm writing. Sounds like a heavy discussion. What are you up to tonight? I'm just planning to sit and relax. Please don't let my presence interrupt you. Oh, don't worry about it. Although, I need to interrupt Lemon Cookie for a moment. Sure, how can I help you? Can I have a cup of... Hmm. You remember my remedy? Of course. Do you want to give it a try again? My last order didn't quite hit the spot. Remember, it's tea and ginger. Thankfully, he tells me. Would not have been able to remember. The last thing is definitely a different ingredient from either of those. Okay, remember. It has tea and ginger. Yeah, thanks for telling me again. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Tea. Ginger. And what did I use last time? I definitely didn't use mint, so I'll try mint. <clears throat> Ginger mint tea. Is it? Is this it? How is it? Nope. This drink doesn't even follow my guidelines. Far from it. Oh my, pardon me for the mistake. What did I do wrong? Tea and ginger. Isn't that what he said? Never mind. Anyway, please don't mind me and continue with your discussion. Did I... Should I the ginger in last. Don't worry, Mr. Gala, we're done for the night. You're done. I have a lot of new homework, thanks to you. You're welcome. And as I read, um, the story or the, the content changes depending on the drinks I serve, so probably something else would have happened if I would have given him something else to drink. Is Hyde coming? No, I'm by myself tonight. It's gonna be a peaceful night then. That's mean, Freya. Come on, I was just joking. He needs to learn how to communicate his thoughts nicely, though. He might not look like it, but he's a very kind person, you know? He doesn't show it, that's for sure. That applies to you as well. Ah, oh, come on! Baileys, good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Baileys. Hey, um, how are you doing, Freya? Not good. What's going on? Lemon Cookie was just criticizing my story. It's called feedback. It's cruel. It's necessary. Sounds interesting. What's the problem with the story? The story is non-linear. And quite complicated. Imagine a choose-your-own-adventure storybook. But for adults. Sounds pretty common so far. But instead of telling you which page to turn to, 
Each decision you make will give you a score. What? That score will determine which page you should go to. That sounds more like a video game than a book. I know, it's not that original. But my target here is the mainstream audience. Huh? With the help of my publisher. This kind of book may go mainstream. Just like uh, that Choose Your Own Adventure show on that stream. It was nothing new, but because of the marketing and the names involved, it reached the mainstream market. It sounds interesting. A highly ambitious for At least it's simpler than my other idea. Which is making the novel not in the form of book, but in the form of story cards. Well, I know, right? As if she has all the time in the world. And that's before even considering the sensitive issue of setting the story in a world where only humans exist. What did you say? No, there's a reason why it has to be that way. Just wait until I've finished it, okay? All right, all right. As Lemon Cookie said, though, I won't have the time. Getting a normal pitch approved is already a steep climb. Let's not make the mountain even higher. Fair enough. What's the story all about, by the way? You'll have to wait for it. Do I want to spoil the fun? If you say so. Anyway, I haven't ordered anything. What do you want to drink tonight? Ginger latte, if you know how to make it. Let's look it up. Just to be sure. Ginger. It's not in here. I'm wondering why this gets updated with new... Why there are these red exclamation, exclamation marks. And the stuff that I... Yeah, Russian tea. This gets added. Or does it only always get added the other day? I didn't do the cuff syrup. I don't know how I discover these. They get discovered by by themselves or what? I just don't know how this works. Ginger latte. I think I'll just try coffee, milk, and ginger. I guess. <clears throat> Milk, ginger, coffee. Here you go. Thanks. Hmm. It's good. But. But. Need more ginger. Not that it's bad or anything. I guess it's just my personal taste. Oh, this is how I note it. Did he now put it in a notebook in the blue pad? No, not really, so I'll have to remember next time. By the way, how are you doing, Baileys? Still busy with the last client? Oh, I'm done with her. Done? As in you're dropping the project? Hey, I'm not crazy. I still need the money. Done, as in I finished the, the job. I spent the last few days making sure it's even done before the deadline. Did she like it? Ah, oh, she loved it. She had some complaints, of course, but I convinced her. By using some design terms she doesn't understand. So you finished your job by bullshitting her? Ha ha ha. Fine as bullshit, my lady. That's one survival skill every freelancer must have. Are you working on anything right now? No. I'm taking a break from work. I need to work on a few personal matters. Oh. Like you and Lua? Something like that. By the way, I'm curious, how did you guys meet, if you don't mind me asking? I don't mind, it's just that I was young and stupid, you know? Oh, come on, who hasn't been there? You're right, so I was a bit of a player like back in college. Oh, spicy. And I was going after my then best friend's girlfriend's friend. Wait, what? Okay, I'll say it slowly. I used to have a best friend. He was an incubus. Okay, let's call him Cognac. Cognac has a girlfriend. Still following. And that girl has a friend. Friend is the one I'm after. Oh, okay. Got it. Pretty usual constellation in my opinion. She was one of the hardest girls there. But everyone knew she wasn't the type of girl you would want to date. Why? It's... 
I don't want to get into details. But the succubus was super hot. And all the girls wanted to sleep with her. She was a player too. Huh? Doesn't sound like Lua at all. Because it wasn't Lua genius. Huh? Lua was my friend's girl. Holy moly. This is getting spicier. The other girl's name was... Let's just call her Rose. Continue. I knew, I knew Lua thanks to her relationship with Kanyak. It's a fake name you made up, right? Yes! <laughs> Baby and Kanyak. Now, will you let me continue without interruptions? Okay, okay. So I asked Lua a lot of things about Rose. She knew what I was after. It annoyed her so much, but I kept on bothering her. I mean, I was a pretty active guy back then. So Lua came over to visit us at one point. I lived with Kanyak back in college. I'd been out and I got back just as Lua arrived. Total coincidence. We went into our place together and witnessed something surprising. What? Kanyak was sleeping with Rose. Holy mother of moly! I saw the look on Lua's face. The disbelief, anger, sadness. And without even thinking about it, I punched Kanyak in the face. You what? I got into a fight with him. Oh, I haven't told you. Kanyak was a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tutor for kids. He's pretty good. Oh my. Yeah, I landed that one punch and he beat me to a pulp. Easily. Lua begged me to stop fighting on her behalf. Yeah, more like she begged Cognac. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I lost, but I don't give up so easily. I was beaten pretty bad. So Lua took care of my injuries. We grew closer after that. And I don't remember the exact date, but suddenly that friendship turned into a relationship. That was one hell of a story. I know might influence tomorrow's short story. Have you seen her by any chance? Yeah. Lua came by a few days ago. How was she doing? She hasn't returned any of my calls or texts. Well, she's healthy, that's for sure. She got into an argument though. With whom? There was this male model. Model? I didn't think she was the type of girl to go out with a model. Oh, they weren't together. What were they arguing about? Well, we were talking about your relationship. Lua told us about the reason behind the fight. About your family stuff. And then this guy Hyde joined the discussion. What did he say? He didn't understand why Lua would insist on getting family approval. Considering, you know, what? You're willing to leave your own family. You would do that for her? Yes, I would. I'm sick and tired of my family. Why would you say that? Let me tell you about my family. Or should I say, I should say, most elven families. Think, they all think they're so high and mighty. If you're born an elf, there are certain unwritten rules you must follow. Reputation and appearance are everything. We must never ever make our family look bad. You can only befriend certain people. You must dress a certain way. You can only have certain jobs. Jobs that are deemed worthy and successful. Like being a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO. You know. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be an artist. I love drawing and creating art. However, becoming an artist is not something else would deem suitable. Unless you become the next Da Vinci. So when I switched from a business mayor to an art major, my parents went crazy, screamed like they were on fire. They told me that I'd never be rich or successful. All that because you chose an art degree? You wanna know the worst part? They blamed Lua. What do you mean? They blamed her for my decision to pursue my passion for art. They yelled about her yelled about how, how her kind is ruining the, con the country, accusing their religion of worshipping the Dark Lord. 
accusing her of putting a spell on me and cursing the family. What? I mean, come on, this is the 21st century. That's so not cool. I don't want to sound judgmental, but your family is racist. Tell me about it. Lua is the only person that can make me feel alive. She showed me how I can be free and pursue my dreams. I don't understand why Lua is so obsessed with the idea of reconciliation with my family. I just don't get it. I have no problem leaving my family, you know. I would happily leave them for the both of us. What about her? What about her and her family? You may be happy to leave your family. However, it may not be the same for her. I... Gala, do you have anything to say? Something to say, I'm sorry. Perhaps you could give us a different perspective. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I couldn't help overhearing your story. I assume that the person you're talking about is not an elf, correct? Yeah, she's a succubus. I see. I'm a werewolf. For werewolves, the wolf pack is the most important thing. We'll put family before any other. We often have our own problems within the pack. But we won't abandon our family for anything. Perhaps that's also true for her and her family. Besides, if you leave your family for her, wouldn't that make your parents believe that all those bad stereotypes about Sukabi are true? I never thought of it that way before. Whether you like it or not, your actions will have an impact on her as well. And if you leave your family for her, then we'll put her in a diff difficult spot. She might feel responsible for your actions. There's nothing to feel bad about. I'm leaving my messy family to create a better one with her. It's easy for you to say that now, but you don't know what the future holds. One day, circumstances might change. One day, one of you might regret your decisions. One day, you might use the I left my family for you card. We love each other. I'll be with her whatever the circumstances may be. You know, love is like a flame. It might burn first fiercely at first, but over time it will die down if you don't maintain it. Maintaining it won't be easy, it will be hard work, because life, life is full of storms. And marriage, it will not survive on love alone. Wow, that's deep. We'll have each other, and that's enough for us. Tell me, do you have health insurance? What? I'm an elf, why would I need health insurance? You'll need some. What for? Immortality is an elven privilege. But you'll lose it if your family disowns you. I've seen people go bankrupt because they fell ill and got seriously injured their entire life savings for an $8 pill, because in this country they can charge $20,000 for it. And if you decide to have children, they won't have the same privileges you do. There's a high probability that they'll get bullied for being a half-breed. There are consequences. It shouldn't be taken lightly. Think about it. Anyway, I've gotta go. I apologize for my intrusion. No, thank you for your insight. I've got to go too. Wanna head out together? Sure. Thanks for the drink, lemon cookie and Freya. Bye. What? You made me lose two customers in a minute. Hey, that wasn't on me. They were leaving anyway. You going to write that in your book? It's a secret. If your book is based on this coffee shop, how can you present a story like theirs in a world with only humans around? I'm not sure. Perhaps a hot drink will give you some inspiration. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Got an idea what
what she can write. Sugar and spice, spice, sweet and natural bliss in a cup. Is that the drink that was now added to my, my uh, menu? Uh, whatever. <laughs> See you in the next episode. Bye bye.